Are you ready for the word this morning? Here's I believe this with all my heart. There's going to be strength released this morning to you, and you can have it if you need it, if you want it, if you desire it. Strength is coming to you this morning to fight uh, and not. How many of you know sometimes you're beat before you even start? You ever, you ever watch a ball game or watch a fight? You're beat before you even start because of how you believe. I'll tell you so many times what we believe, and, and, and I'll make this statement. Um, well, let's just talk. Let's, let's start uh, with, with the word this morning, or with the word of prayer this morning. Father, thank you th- today for your word to every person here that it's specifically tailored uh, to, to fight and to advance. Uh, and, to, uh, and to uphold and uplift us, uh, our countenance, our posture, uh, and advance uh, to brighter days, even brighter and brighter. We thank you that the path that you made ready for us is brighter, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, we're, we're in the series of Faith School, uh, and the title of today's message is Faith Fight. How many of you ever, go to, ever, ever had to fight at school? Anybody? Yeah? Um, How many of you ever had, uh, you've watched a few shows where the kid gets beat up at school, right? And they come home and dad teaches them the old one too, right? How many of you know what I'm talking about? Uh, I always, I always could relate to those, those moments because, um, I mean, I I think uh, I'm not like, some people, I'm a fighter, not a, I'm not a flighter, right? I run to the fight more than I run away from the fight. I was more like the kid that kids were getting picked on in the playground, I ran to the fight, and I beat up the other kids that were picking on him. I don't even know what was going on, but don't pick on him. He's little. You're big, right? And this, I mean, I got, I, my kids sometimes are like, oh, tell me the story, Dad, when that happened. Tell me the story when that happened. And it's kind of fun to, to think about those, those times and think about uh, some, of my, some of my friends that, um, that were redeemed through the strength of my hand, right? <laughs> That pretty much stopped uh, in about sixth grade as things got a little more, as you got a little bit stronger and things along those nature. Um, and anyway, so I, I think about those times. And my mom and, she, and my dad, they always taught us to stand up for what's right. That's it. So a faith fight. So, you know, how many of you know in a faith fight, it's good to have, I was going to talk about faith friends. How many of you know it's good to have friends in a fight? Any, anybody know what I'm talking about? It, let's say you were, in a, uh, you were walking uh, uh, back to your car and you get jumped. How many of you know there's a few friends that you would be like, I really don't care if they're there, but I sure would like if he was there. You know what I mean? Like, you, so you got those guys that you're like, oh, yeah. They might not be as good as they once were, but they're good once, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's going down. And some of y'all don't relate to this, but I'll tell you... Um, you, you might have your teeth knocked out and you might be black and blue in a faith fight. You, you, might, you might not be a physical fighter, um, but, but because you, you just have a personality or whatever it might be. But guess what? You're going to have to fight or you're going you're gonna to die. Let me say it this way. Either you fight the fight of faith or faith dies. Is it, this is a matter of life or death. The fight is a matter of life or death. And so it's, it's important to have a, a trainer, a coach, a friend, uh, faith friends for a faith fight. Yes, that's right. yeah. There's examples to us uh, in the word that we're going to look at today. Uh, of what does it look like uh, to, uh, to, to f- approach the fight? One of the things that will cause you and me to quit before or be beat before we ever start is our eyes. Our eyes, our eyes will, they'll, they'll beat you before you ever start the fight of faith. You went to the fight, and you fought, but you were beat before, so you just got pummeled. You ever watch those kind of fights? Like, yeah, you showed up, and you got in the ring, but before you ever got there, it was just like, all right, let me have it. Okay. Why, why, but I, I, we're there fighting because, well, I better show up because they, I got to show up for my friends. No, that's not what friends, they just want you to show up and get the crud beat out of you. A friend wants you to show up, and they, they'll encourage you, and they'll t- t- remind you, they'll train you, and say, and, and they'll be in your corner, so to speak, like go back to Rocky, or, or, or the, they'll be in your corner encouraging you, to directing you, hey man, keep your hands up, hey man, hey, 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 look at me, look at me, look at me, he's getting weak, he's getting weak, they'll encourage you, they, 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 they'll point out what's working, what's not working, so on and so forth. 
So I want to uh, I want to uh, talk about when we go into a fight, we have to have something, and that's called courage. If we don't have courage to fight or to start the fight, it, it, I'm not. Uh, we will we are beat before we ever start. So I want to look at this example, and then we're going to look at this story uh, this morning, and then we're going to look at Abraham. Uh, but first, I want to just talk about this this the story that happened to Paul. And so we're going to turn to Acts, uh, Acts chapter 27. Uh, and we're not going to read all of it. We're going to read a, a fairly good portion of it. Acts chapter 27, uh, 9 through 10, and then 13 through 27, and then 33 through 36. Um, and so this is the story of Paul on a boat, and he's on his way to Rome uh, to testify before Caesar. And so he's a prisoner, and he gets put on this boat, and they begin to make their way. Uh, and so picking up in verse time, uh, uh, verse 9, uh, as they had made their way, uh, it wasn't going as well as planned. The journey was delayed. Uh, how many of you have ever had a journey be delayed? Yeah. Anybody that just thought it would happen by now? And so what happens when you, your journey is delayed, um, you and I, we, we begin to uh, really be aware of what's going on. Right? We're looking at everything. When there's a delay, it's like we're looking at everything that's not. Right? We're assessing all these things. So here we are, picking up verse 9. Much time had been lost, and sailing had already become dangerous, because now uh, it was after the Day of Atonement. So Paul warned them, man, I can see that our voyage is going to be disastrous. Hmm. It's interesting. He could see something. He could see in advance. He could see, and he said, and bring great loss to the ship and cargo, and also to our own lives. Uh, when a gentle uh, south wind began to blow, they saw their opportunity. Someone say, they saw their opportunity. This is verse 13. So we, they saw their opportunity. So here, here Paul said, I see, I can see in advance this is not going to be for good. But because of the delay, when the other people, the, the not looking with their heart, right? How, how did Paul see in advance? He got, he got uh, in his heart, this is, we need, we need to not go. We need to not go. So he actually tells it was strong enough that he, a prisoner, tells the captain. <laughs> That's pretty strong. Hey, we shouldn't go. I can see it's not going to be for good. It's going to be, it, we're going we're gonna, to we're, we're gonna lose our lives. We're gonna, the ship's going to be lost. The cargo's going to be lost. But what did the people do? When they saw, when they saw a south wind begin to blow, when they saw that the conditions looked right, they're like, oh, we're encouraged because the conditions look right. How many times are we encouraged when the conditions look right, but we, we are going based on what we see versus what we know in our heart or a word? A faith fight, that's what we're talking about this morning, is not based on what you see out here. It's about what you have in here. If you don't have something here first, you're beat before you start. And this is why Paul didn't want to set out because in his heart, inside he knew, he said, I can see in advance that it's not going to be for our good. But the other people not being led that way, they saw an opportunity when the south, verse 13, a gentle south wind began to blow. They saw their opportunity, and so they waited the anchor and sailed along the shore of Crete. Verse 14, before long, uh, a wind of a uh, hurricane force called the Northeaster swept down from the island, uh, and the ship was caught by the storm and could not head into the wind. So we gave way to it and were driven along. As we passed to the lee of the small island uh, called Kata, we were hardly able to make the lifeboat secure. So the men hoisted it aboard. Then they passed ropes under the ship to hold it together because they were afraid they would run aground on the sandbars. So can you imagine this? They grab ropes, jump into the ocean, and have, in the waves, and have to swim a rope underneath of the boat. Or, uh, how are they? You know, this crazy stuff's going on, guys. Anybody been in a storm like this? Anybody been on the ocean here and thought they legit thought they weren't going to make it back to uh, alive? Okay, we did. This is true. Last year, thought we were going to die for real. Uh, yeah, <laughs> crazy, stupid. And I mean, we yeah, for real. It was the Lord that we made it back. Um, but here, this crazy stuff going on, like a true life or death situation. Let's keep on going here. Uh, they, 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 so the men hosted aboard. They passed ropes under the ship to hold it together because they were afraid they'd run aground on the sandbars. They lowered the sea anchor and let the ship be driven along. So uh, we took such a violent battering from the storm that the next day they began to throw cargo overboard. Wow, what a night. On the third day, another day, 
another day. So day three, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. When they, neither, they never saw the sun or the stars appear for many days, and the storm continued raging. Anybody got some storms continuing to rage? It's been like a day, it's been a day, it's been a day, it's been a day. What, what starts happening when, it, when these things prolong? You kind of get tired? Yeah. Uh, you kind of lose all hope? Yeah. Because we talked about last week about how, how faith is the substance of what you're hoping for. So it's the pillar. Faith is the pillar that upholds hope. And so you begin to lose faith. You begin hopeless. Why? Because, you, you, first of all, they didn't have faith to begin with. They didn't have a word. They had a condition. You know what conditions do? They change. Conditions change. Like if, if it's if, 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 if anything you see, it can change. Your 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 stock account that has X amount of thousands of dollars in it, or maybe even millions. You know that can change just in, that quick. Anything that you could see can be changed. And so here's day three. They, they, they're, they're, the, it says the third day, the ship tackle, they threw it overboard. When neither the sun nor the stars appeared for many days and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. Verse 21. After they had gone a long time without food, Paul stood up before them and said, Men, you should have taken my advice. <laughs> Not to sail from Crete. Then, uh, then you would have spared yourself this damage and loss. But... Now I urge you to keep your courage. So he's, so he's saying, y'all, I told you so. I told you so. But, but I want to tell you what. Get your, you, you, all hope, you look like you all are hopeless. Get your courage up. And here's, what he, here's why he says, get your courage up. Because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night, an angel of God, uh, or a messenger of God, Uh, to whom I belong and whom I serve, stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar. And God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. This is amazing. amazing. So keep up, somebody highlight, underline verse 25. So keep up your courage, men. How do you keep up your courage? For I have faith in God. Where's my faith? I have faith in God. I don't have just I don't have faith in his word. I have faith in the author of the word. This is so important. We talked about carrying the one a few weeks ago. Am I, have I carried the one? Have I carried the Lord into this situation? He said, uh, I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. So this is like day three, right? They threw the stuff over. It might be the day. It might be the, the eat coming into the fourth. Uh, it, they threw all the stuff over, and here we go. It'll have courage, man. It's going to happen just. Nevertheless, we must run aground on some island. Now, on the 14th night, we were still driven across the, 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 the Adriatic Sea, which, or the, the sea that's south of Italy, below the boot, like out there in the middle of the Mediterranean, far from shore. 14, here's the, night 14. It's not getting any better. But someone gave me a word. But some, some, yeah, so somebody gave me a word, but it's not getting any better. The conditions look hopeless. W- w- hold to the word. Yes. Let's just say this. Hold to the word. Yes. Maybe. Nevertheless, uh, he said, uh, on verse 27, on the 14th night, we are still being driven across the Adriatic Sea. Verse 33, just before dawn... But now, on the 14th night, just before dawn, Paul urged them to eat. He said, for the last 14 days, he said, you have been in constant suspense and have gone without food. You haven't eaten anything. Now I urge you, take some food. You're going to need it to survive. Not one of you will lose a single hair from your head. Wow, 14 days of treachery. And here he comes again. He said, it's been 14 days now. He told them, maybe on day three, and here's 14 days. Now y'all need to eat. You haven't eaten in 14 days. You're going to need it to be, to, to be able to continue on what, what's coming next. And after, I think this is so powerful. This is what I, after he had said this, he took some bread. What did he do? After he took some bread, and he gave thanks, and then he did what? He broke it. 
and began to eat. What do you see here? Somebody help me out. What do you see here? What, what, what is the type and shadow or what is the... It's communion, isn't it? This is what this is right here. In a storm. When you could say it this way, all hell had been breaking loose and it was hopeless. What did he do? He said, y'all, we need to eat. And when he ate, what, what did he do? He took some bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it. Remember a few weeks ago, we talked about how, uh, how the, the Lord was getting you and me because faith is of the heart. He was getting his disciples not to be so uh, sense-led when he joined himself with them on the road to Emmaus, they couldn't see him or they couldn't sense him with their senses, but their hearts were burning within them, right? And so here they were not to be so, to, not to be so outward, outwardly led. Here's the same, the same picture. What happened when Jesus was in, sat down, he took bread and he broke it and after he had given thanks, and then he disappeared, and then they said, did our hearts not burn? They recognized Jesus in this. When, on the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took, this is the Corinthians, he took bread and he broke it. This is the Last Supper. This is the recounting of covenant. This is vital in the storm. This is something that is not just done because of sin. This is vital for a storm. And we need to be doing this. And, 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 it, and it says, and they were all encouraged and ate food themselves. Isn't that interesting? Just how they were encouraged by a prayer. Somebody prayed and was reminded and reminding himself. He, bro- he Thank you, Lord. And he, he broke. He, he was putting himself back into that place of covenant. And everybody was. So take courage. Why can you take courage? Uh, you can only take courage if you believe that it'll be just as God has said. So we're talking about faith fight. We're talking about going into a fight. Uh, and we're going we're gonna to look at Abraham this morning. I want you just to see that fights are going on and fights are going on in this room right now. There's faith fights. There's faith fights concerning bodies. There's faith fights concerning marriages. There's faith fights concerning parents. There's faith fights concerning all kinds of number of things. There's faith fights right now. And some have been going on uh, 14 days. Some have been going on for years. Uh, there was a woman that had an issue of blood for, and spent all she had for 12 years. How many of you know she had a faith fight? And, she, and yet she continued to press on and through a crowd and touch the hem of Jesus' garment. How many of you would say that Abraham, which who we're going to look at, how many of you have been in this faith fight for like 90 plus years? Anybody here? Been in your faith fight for nine, because Abraham and his wife were in this faith fight for a long time. So we're going to look at that. Let's see if you have your Bible, turn with me. Oh, here, I want to, I want to hit this first. Um, this is so good. Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. Um, and I, I would say this before we read this. Uh, before, the, before the problem, there was a solution. I mean, again, I have faith in God, the one who he declares the end from the beginning. So look at this in Revelation verse 13. He says, all the inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast, all whose names have not been written. And again, we're, I want to just draw attention to the lamb of, of Jesus. All whose names have not been written in the lamb's book of life, the lamb who is slain from the creation of the world. When did, like, he, he had a plan before there was a problem. Before there was ever, there was a plan. So there's a plan for you and me before there was ever a problem. There will be problems tomorrow, but guess what? Before you get to that problem, somebody say, y'all got, y'all gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna be, we will not make La Fiesta or El Tria. It will close. Before the problem, somebody tell me there's a so there will be a problem tomorrow, but guess what? Before you get to the problem, guess what? There is. There's a plan. God has a plan. He has a plan for you. He has a plan for me. As a matter of fact, uh, he's he given us some promises. And these promises are about the plan. In 2 Peter 1, 3 through 4, it says, His divine power has given us everything we need for our life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and excellence. Through these, He has given us precious and magnificent promises 
so that through them we could be partakers of his divine nature. Not that you have escaped the corruption of the world. He's saying God gave us having escaped the corruption of this world caused by its evil desires. What is, it, what is the answer to the problem? Promise. So even when, when the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world, how did it get to here? How did it get later on? It was, it was a word that he had an answer to the problem before. He already had the answer. And so I almost titled this morning's message, Trust the Teacher. Trust the Teacher. Before you get to that problem, they already know the answer. So you might be stumped on this one, but the answer is already there. It's already there. Trust the teacher, okay? But this is, we're talking about faith fight. So let's look here. Um, and again, all of God's grace is brought to you by faith. Yes. Think about this. Ephesians chapter 2, it says, by, uh, by faith are you saved through grace, right? Let's put it up there. For it is by grace you've been saved, but how, how do we appropriate this grace? God's favor, God's help. How do you and I get God's help? It, it runs through something. The pipeline of? It's the pipeline of faith that you, in a sense, draw from God's grace. Faith. So is faith important? Yes. Faith is very important. It is what's attacked. What you believe is what's attacked to where you would quit. He said, take courage, men. Take courage, men. Take courage, men. What would have happened if they would have quit on day 10? Or day 11? Or, or day 12, or day 14, and just said, we're not eating. We can't quit. So we're going to look at Abraham this morning. Romans chapter, we're going to look at uh, four verses here. Romans chapter 4, 16 through 20. And we're just going to talk about um, how to fight the fight of faith this morning. Just kind of like the old one, two, get the hands up. Uh, and then we're going to close this morning uh, with with a, a song, and we're going to put into practice a, a little bit of that, all right? Um, so Romans chapter 4, 16 through 20. Therefore, we just basically quoted this, but here we are again. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. Ha, ha, a, a, grace is appropriated. God's help is appropriated in your life by faith. So young people, if, if you're struggling like, where's God, where's God, where's God? Let me ask you this. He's never left. He, he's not going to forsake you. Even when we're faithless, he remains faithful. But if I want to tap his help, it's going to take me trusting the Lord or reaching out, or it's going to take faith, the conduit of faith. How is it that salvation comes? You believe, and then you speak. It, this, is how, this is how salvation comes. It's faith. You have to believe before you ever receive. That's Romans 10, 9 and 10. All of salvation, all of salvation, saving power to heal your body. How does it come? You look to the conditions to be right and then believe? No. Nope. He said, you believe and then you believe. So grace is how we're saved, but it's through the conduit of faith. If we don't believe first, we're going to always be wondering, we'll always be questioning, we'll always be looking at the conditions, and guess what? If your eyes are what you're using to, uh, to fight the fight of faith, you are beat before you even start. Matter of fact, I would say you didn't enter the ring of faith. Because if you enter the ring of faith, giants fall. If you enter the ring of faith, mountains move. If you enter the ring of faith, bodies are healed. If you enter the ring of faith, you're not concerned even about time because you already have it. Why am I worried about what's way out there when faith receives now the finished work? of G These heroes of faith, they died having yet received. These are our examples. Well, They didn't even get what they were believing for and standing for. They didn't see Christ, yet they believed. And they owned it all the while. And the Lord said, these are, these are your examples and these are your heroes of faith. So many times we're, we're so result-oriented, we're the wait-and-see generation. We're a wait-and-see. I was thinking about this, and, and we had a, had a meeting. I've just been thinking a lot about this lately as the church. And I uh, had a leadership meeting the other night, and... 
just thinking about how uh, the charismatic uh, renewal and, and really, I kind of just thrown out some dates here, but probably in the uh, late 90s, early 2000s, when uh, th- technology began to just almost begin to leapfrog and, and the pace of life began to change and iPhones and cell phones and all this kind of stuff, it was just like, whew. and what ha- was going on, the Lord was bringing so many people into church, uh, so many people. Um, and, and, and the churches were co- trying to come up with ways, and there was mega churches starting, and people were like, man, like big churches were popping up, and, and uh, you, we had to, in a sense, like move people through like cattle. And, and the goal was more like just to try to get somebody to say a prayer, to say I did a number, and, and just check a number, just check a number that someone got saved. And, and so we, were, we as a church, as we were beginning to raise people um, that were, they were weak Christians, we kind of got them through the growth track, you know, two steps and then you're, you're done, on to the next, two, one, two, three, or four steps, right, or five, like whatever, just like kind of get them through, get them through, on to the next, on to the next, on to the next, and we'll preach the word, that's good, but like the, just some of the foundational and uh, you and I knowing those things, and so one of the things we were talking about was just Sunday school, and, um, and I never had had Sunday school, I mean, I uh, never had known it, never had, but just the word in the house, not in this house, not in the church, but the word in the homes began to not be as, as prevalent, right? And so we had, we, we, I, I don't know if, how many of you can look back and testify of this, but you can see that just some of those things in the church, they just kind of were lost a little bit. But I don't think they were lost, they were just maybe don't, like let go for a little while. Anyway, uh, and so what, I, what I've seen is, I, and you this is observation. This is not scripture, but this is observation. Uh, many people that found faith in the last 20 years in the time of adversity will let go of it because they don't have a foundation of the word themselves. Not just pastors' word, but themselves, taking it themselves. And so it's important that we are, be strong in faith. You know, you can't be strong in faith if you're not strong in the Word. And This is the truth. You can't be strong in faith if you're not strong in the Word. Can you make heaven? Sure. Can you go through hell and live through hell? Yeah. But that's what it will be. But... The Bible says this, that thanks be to God who always causes a You can have a victory. Uh, you can have a, a victory and walk in hope and walk in triumph and overcome in this world through faith. Now, this is the victory that overcomes in this world, faith. Faith yeah. appropriates the works or the promises of salvation. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know how I got off on that, but it's important that we have the word for ourselves at home. You know, man, I gave given a lot of different verses. Go and, and read them. Somebody teach me how to read the Bible. Somebody teach me, show me how. It, it doesn't just happen on Sunday morning. It has, it has to happen in addition to. Yes. You know, we think about like we just, uh, again, I'm, I don't know how we, I'm getting off on this, but when you look at our lives right now, when you look at our lives right now and where our priorities have gone as a nation, where we're about to go vote and all of these kind of things. You know, uh, on the TikTok video, uh, I res- responded uh, just the other day about uh, why it's our... I'm just, I'm just leaving this. And we're going to go to Philippians instead. We're, we'll pick up this later. Cause I, and we're going to do the communion at the end still. So. All right. Oh, thank you, Lord. We are where we are as a nation um, because of idle hands. It's just where we, the truth, as the, as the body of Christ, whether it's through prayer. Now, why, why, is, why do things get idle? Is it because we don't want to? No, it's just because we're busy. Right? How many of you know what I'm talking about? Anybody just have to get busy and, and you let go of some things, right, that you know that are good to do? Busyness. In busyness, if the devil can't make you bad, church, he's going to make you busy. And he's going to put a lot of other things before us, a lot of other cares, and we'll begin chasing after all these other cares. 
instead of the one thing that we need to be focused on. Or, and or, or, and, and I, again, I'm not trying to say, oh, we need to be all, all ultra, oh, spiritual people. God's given you everything richly to enjoy. These promises are for your life and, and to, all that. But, but when, when, I, when I'm busy, I have to ask the question, are my priorities neglected? And what is my priority? Because see, what happens when I'm busy, I say yes, and I say yes, and I say yes. But my yes so many times, and we know this, we've heard this, my yes is actually no to something else. But I have to ask myself, are my yeses the, the things that I want? Are my truly the things that I want, that my heart desires? I don't care if it's a job. You're like, oh, Pastor Nate, you're going to make me lose. I'm not making you do anything. But somebody is asking you the question to say, hey, check your heart. Is the job that you're in right now that's paying you this much, is that where you want to be? Is that where the Lord wants you to be? Or are you there just because of the dollar? These are, these are real questions that I, I can't answer for you, but there's some conversations with you and the Lord that need to be had. With, with my kids, in, and I love sports, but just because my kid was in sports, are they supposed to stay in sports? I got a guy actually right here, Braden Driscoll. He's playing baseball this year, right? Senior year. What did you lay down this last year? Two years ago. Football, right? Yeah. But, you, but bro, you played all, isn't your dad like all-state quarterback, D1? Oh, Josh Driscoll. Like he's Mr. Football. He's a, not only is he a football coach, but he's a D1 athlete. Got drafted, went to o, OSU, then played, right? You went to Arkansas. Now, I know that's where you went, but where you were going to originally go and all that stuff. OSU. OSU, okay? And then the coach left, all this kind of stuff. Then he went to Arkansas Tech. Throw how many touchdowns versus the Vols? Was it the Vols? Help me out. Do you, against Georgia. Yeah, and did you throw some touchdowns? Okay. Against Georgia, like the Bulldogs? Like SEC? So you, you were on the field against SEC teams? Okay, your dad was, he played on the field against Georgia. And you did what? You quit football? What's wrong with you? He's a, he is a, a, he's a, come on, what's wrong with you? It wasn't a priority? You made your own decision? Wow. Because you started something, does that, why, why? Well, you started something, maybe you should keep on doing it all the way through your senior year. But you said no because you, you wanted to give yourself to some other things? Wow. This summer, uh, he was an intern at church. Priorities. Decisions. Decisions. Busyness. So many times we get going on things, and we have to learn to pause and say, Lord, is this still the path? Is this still the path? I... It's just a good question to ask the Lord. This life is not my own. Like, what are we doing here? Romans chapter 12. Go ahead and throw it up there. You'll find it. It it tells us, I I beseech you, brethren, in view of the mercies of God, I beg of you. It's this picture of Paul getting on his knees and saying, hey, church, in view of God's goodness. Like, he is so good. I can see what God has good for you. He said, I want, you, I want to I beg you to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. That is not, this is your reasonable, like, not your own. Because when I live with him as my commander, as my director, as my king, as my Lord, guess what I'm going to experience? I'm going to see a lot of mercy in my life. What's, what's that, Kindness. Just the goodness, his mercies, his kindness, new every morning. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercy of God, offer your bodies. It doesn't say make. This is an offer. I'm not talking to you about making you do anything. I'm, giving, I'm just kind of pulling back some covers here and having a conversation that now you're having an internalizing conversation. I wish you would have never had that conversation with me. Now I'm having a conversation with me, and I, I don't like this. I just wonder, why can't I just keep on going down this way? Well, because the bridge is out up ahead. Yeah. Yeah. And... Um, that's why. Because the bridge is out up ahead. Yeah. Your kids will be adults. How you train them today and the reps, right? 
that you get to put with them. I love that Paul told, uh, uh, Paul's talking to Timothy. He said, I, as I recall to, uh, to remembrance the faith that first dwelt in your grandmother, your faith that first dwelt. So your faith is a product of your family? Go, go look at there. Go look at there sometime. Look at it. Uh, when I call to remembrance your, your faith, the faith, the real faith that first dwelt in your grandma and, and, and then dwelt in your mom, and I, I believe it dwells in you also. Your faith. Your faith, can you pass that down to your kids? Did to Timothy? Reps. It matters. Again, I don't know how we are on this other than the Lord saying, hey, we being busy, being with all the stuff going on in life, so many times the very things we want most is what we're not choosing. So just asking ourselves that. What do I want most? What do I, what do I desire? It, it, the, does the big house really do it for me? Or, or is it my family around the table? What is it? If the next project, I'm talking to myself here. If the next project or the next thing or the next thing or the next thing is actually robbing me from the main thing, robbing from me the main thing, then maybe it's not the thing. Maybe it really is a distraction. Maybe it is the little foxes that spoil the vine. Anybody ever have chickens? Chickens can make a mess in a hurry. You could plant a, a garden, and in a matter of a couple of hours, you can go out there, and they've scratched and ruined all of your plantings. Just that quick. Anyway, so what are we doing with, with our lives? What are we doing? What are we doing? Just asking that question. What, where's our priorities lie? Um, well, how, how, are we, how, how are we assessing our lives? How are we fighting? Do I have time for the word? Do I have time, do I have time for my family? Do I have time? I, I don't know why I'm talking about this. I think it's because of this. There are a lot of worries, and one of the, one of the greatest enemies of faith is worry. Yes. This is why. And when, as I was getting ready, uh, I just wanted to talk about the fight of faith. What I saw more than anything else in my heart, even while I was here on the front row, it's like, Lord, why are we doing this? I just saw a worried church. That's what I saw. And I'm like, how do you want to address worry? I just saw, I just saw a worry in, in the house. I saw worry in the homes. Maybe we got a smile face here. Maybe we can put on a good show here. But I see worry, and I, see, I just saw silence. How many of you know uh, when you're worrying so many times you're not talking, you're just thinking? You're not listening to out here. You're actually listening to the noise that's so loud in your head that you're missing the, all the stuff that's going around you in life, and you're missing the things you really value. I just saw a worried church. I, I, I didn't... It was, it's crazy, like you just get a word of knowledge, talk about worry today, and you're like, oh, I thought we were going to do face school. So let's go to Philippians chapter 4 this morning. And this is what we're going to put into practice this morning. Let's go to Philippians 4, and let's go, we're going to go to Philippians 4, 6, and 7. We're going to start here. And I want, uh, again... Worry eats at faith. It, worry is, um, is what happened on day one and day two and three and four and five and day six and day seven while they're on the boat. How many of you know worry? Worry. And if you go to Matthew, you know, we're not turning there, but if you were in Matthew, he says, um, how, where does worry start? It's, it's because of what you consider. Worry is about what you're considering. Yeah. So this is where in Matthew chapter 6, he says, consider the birds instead of considering what you're going to eat. Consider the birds. Sometimes we got to remember that we need to consider something other than what we're considering. Yeah. You know, we should consider the flowers, not consider the clothes, not consider what I'm going to eat, not con consider the birds. Just like, look at the birds. Just go, just sit out there and just look at the birds and consider them and think about how God's taking care of them. And are you not much more valuable? The, consider the birds. We need to check what we're considering. So Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, and I want to start with this. It says, do not be anxious about anything. What is anything? 
Okay. Can you name that thing? Can you name the thing? What are you worried about? Are you worried that you're not going to have enough money to buy your, a vehicle for your kids? So you're stressing out about how to take an extra job so that you can get them a vehicle, but you're not able to be there present with them so you can get them a vehicle because you love them so much, so you're gone more. So this is important because see, here's what happens is so many times we're anxious about anything, but because we don't know the thing that we're anxious about or we never take time to actually address the thing or name the thing, it just goes on as kind of anything. And you know, anything, could it, it kind of goes along with everything, and, it, and you can't even see where it's at. You can't actually address it. You can't, you're like fighting like this. You're like one who beats the air instead of one who's beating what's going on. And so you're rocked in your world and you're tormented about things. It could be that you're never going to have any friends. It could be that your future husband is going to be, you know, the same the way it's been. Or, uh, or you're, yeah. what, what's going on? What's got you so busy upstairs? Because can I tell you this? In this day and age, sometimes it's not the busyness of a schedule. It's the busyness of the mind that causes us to not do what we want to do. Yeah. We're occupied here because of what we put here. I mean, you can look at it with your phones. We all know this. We're all guilty of this. If you have a phone, and whether you're looking at cooking or hunting or tractors on Marketplace. That one might be me. <laughs> you might miss some things because you're busy. So let's just, again, we're talking about uh, getting God involved in, in our today and winning a fight of faith and not being so busy uh, up here, but being able to choose intentionally how we want our days and what we should be about and how we want our family to look. It starts right here. It really does. It starts with not having a worried people. Because I, cause if you go back to Matthew chapter 6 and he says, your worry is keeping you from seeking first the kingdom. That's what's happening. Your worry, which is what God wants for you. And I would say this, people, every person in here would say, I actually want what God wants for my life. I want the, all those things that he, he wants for my life. I, I, I know that he, he has good plans for me. I, I believe that I want what God wants for my life. Okay, what is it that's keeping me from God's plan for my life? Worry. So often it's worry. Well, what if God has asked you to quit football and pursue, I don't know, ministry, and, but worry would set in and say, how are you going to ever make it and make a paycheck by doing that? You need to go to school four years. You need to do this. You need to do this. You need to do this. But your heart's saying something different. Worry could keep you from the very thing that the Lord has asked you. Worry can make you busy. Worry can cause you to forfeit the kingdom plan for your life. Which, which would be like walking in love. Anybody, anybody when they're filled with worry, does it, is anybody here like me whose patience kind of goes out the window? When you're worried, are you kind of a little bit more edgy? Anybody like me? Okay. Um, uh, maybe when you're worried, uh, maybe in everything, in things that are going on upstairs, maybe you could just keep you, your one-track mind. You walk right by things, oblivious. Uh, so, so loving people, kind of gone. This, that, how many of you would believe that that's important to do? Yeah. How about loving the Lord? Yeah. But, but, but when I'm in worship, and what's going on is worry, 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 worry. Those who worship me must be worship me in spirit and in truth. And we sing, uh, they're a better word, better word. I could use a better word. Uh, 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 see, you know, like here we are praising the Lord and worry, worry, worry. Uh, those who worship me must be in spirit and in truth, like, be on, like genuine with ourselves. 
Anybody got some worry going on? What I got in my heart, I'm telling you, it's so accurate. They're, they're just worry. There's things that, that, are, that are distracting us from the things we want most. And this is the key right here. This is what I, we have to name the thing. What is your anxiety about? Well, I got this rash on my hand. Okay? So you have a rash on your hand. Yeah, but it, that rash in my hand has me messed up a little bit. Well, why does it have you messed up? Like, name, your, name why you're upset or why you're uh, concerned. Well, I, I think it's an autoimmune thing. Like, and, and that it may be something bigger, like maybe something else is going on that I can't see. And so that's got me worried. And that's got me worried about what? Longevity. And how long you'll be here, how long I'll be here for my kids. Should I start this? Should I not... Maybe something's growing on the inside of me. Could cancer be in me right now? And I not even know it? Am I going to be like one of those statistics? Listen, I just went down a path that everyone here is very familiar with. Anybody here familiar with a path like that? Okay, I got three honest people. Go ahead and raise, lift your hands. I got a whole row. Wow, I got a lot of people. So if I don't declare to myself what I am anxious about, I can't even address it. And you know the fight that I'm fighting? It won't be one of faith because I have to have God's word on that matter. So what's God's word on that matter? So, but in every situation by prayer and petition. So I'm going to write the thing down. This is, this is prayer, okay? We're going to talk about prayer. We, we, what am I anxious about? I'm anxious about my kids never coming home to my house because I got on them when they were sleeping around out of wedlock and they think I'm just a nag. And so now they're off with their girlfriend, off with their boyfriend, and it's been X amount of years and I pretty much just completely ruined my relationship with them. So I'm just always going to be that. Name your worry. Name what's going on. What's got you so busy and on a tangent that it's causing you to miss life. Name it and get God's word on the matter. Because there's a lot of things that we look at, like if you go to Ezekiel and you see a a valley full of dead bones, and what are you going to say? Well, it sure looks dead. And he, the Lord says to, he, says to this prophet, he says, can these bones live? You know what he said? You know, Lord. You know, this would be a good thing, to place to start, is where you know, Lord, because these eyes right here are, are defeating me before I ever get in the ring. Uh-huh. These eyes are, are beating me up. How about we go back to you know, Lord. You, but you know, Lord. I've been worried about this, but you know, Lord. Show me. Show me what, what, and you might not even know where, how you got all the way over here and you're worried over here. And, and people go to counseling all the time for this. How they're all the way over here and, pe- and you sit on a couch at somebody's peanut and they'll ask you questions, ask you questions, ask you questions to try to get you back to where you began. So that they can actually get to the root of the problem. Did you know you have a counselor on the inside of you, the Holy Ghost? And he'll remind you of everything that the Lord has said. You know, you can have a counseling session right now. You could have a counseling session with the Lord. You could sit down and say, Lord, show me why I'm so anxious, why I'm so worried, and why I'm so fearful. And he'll he'll show you. He'll show you why. And then you know what he'll remind you of? A word. His word. Or he'll show you how to find it. He'll lead you to it. You might not, you know, I don't know a scripture on that. He, he'll, lead you, he'll lead you to his word. He'll lead you back to the love of God, the goodness of God. He'll lead you back to the, the, the covenant that you have with the Lord. How it was his idea. When you when you're, fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. It wasn't your idea ever to, to bring you on this earth. You ever think about that? Who made you? God made you. It wasn't my idea to be here. 
He's the author, and he's also the finisher. We've got to think about, get our eyes back on the fact that he's the author and the finisher. He had a, a solution before there was ever a problem, and, and my problem he has an answer for. So name it. Name your problem. Instead of letting it run loose in your mind, tie that stinking thing up. And now address it and just beat the stew out of it. So do not be anxious. And then here's what we're going to do. So don't be anxious about anything. You're going to have to name the thing. But in every situation, by prayer and petition. By prayer and petition. Write out what you desire. Mm-hmm. Like we, we live off of a road, uh, uh, deep wood right now. It's dirt, right? And gravel. And it's just it's kind of like you wash a car and you drive by and it's dirt, right? Kind of annoying, honestly. And... Uh, Man, I want a petition. You know what I want a petition? I can tell you. I want a petition that they, number one, widen the road so you don't have to pull up on the ditch So when other people are passing because it's really unsafe. I also want a petition that they chip and seal or tar the road. So if I could write these things down, get very specific, from point A to point B and go to house to house and say, hey, will you sign this petition? Hey, will you sign this petition? A petition. Do you have a petition about prayer? What, what's your prayer? Do you know what you really want? Have you asked the Lord what you really want? Or do you and I just pray about when we're just, ah, and we just, that's no prayer. Because you don't even know why, why you, what, what, you're just crying out for help. Okay, I get that, crying out for help. Calling the, I, I, I get that. But this is an answer to anxiety that's going on and on and on and on. And distracting us from the life that we really like. And really desire and, and for the glory of God. So where, by prayer and petition, did you write down? Uh, I tell my kids, I was telling my boys this. What is your future wife? Tell me about her. Tell me about your future wife. I got three young boys who, since they were young, I've been praying for their wife. Up here woman who's loyal and hot. (laughs) You know why? Because that's what I wanted. One who's loyal, one who's pure and serves the Lord, and who is beautiful on the inside as she is out. What's crazy is what's on the inside, she radiates through to the outside. So pay attention to what's on the inside, not so much what's on the outside. Right. You'll find that the glory, the goodness of God would shine and radiate right through you. Yes. But I, I ask you the question, what are you believing for, for your body? Well, just not to have these problems. That's pretty specific. Let's get a little more specific in our prayer. Let me ask you this. Does God get glory when he answers that pretty much? Or do you just not even know? It just kind of, it's kind of like that testimony week. Anybody have God do? Raise your hand if, if God was good to you this week. Okay. But it wasn't enough to testify through. A... This, is the, this is real. When I don't write down what I'm believing God for, what I want through prayer and petition, and th- th- Lord, I thank you, right? I thank you that you're working in my body for a cause and a cure concerning da 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 yeah. That my blood pressure would come into line yeah. and that I would have blood pressure. What's, what's your number? Uh-huh. Well, what would you like? I would like it to be between 120 and 130 over 80 and 85. Okay, cool. Well, believe the Lord for that. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm asking, Lord, I'm asking you for this. Sometimes we don't even know what to ask for. We need to ask him what to ask for. Lord, tell me. Oh, so then let's go to Romans. And let's show how the Holy Spirit comes to our aid in our weakness when we don't know how to pray as we ought. This is something as well. Have you been praying in the Spirit? Are you baptized in the Spirit? The Spirit of God lives on the inside of you. If you've been born again, 
If you've made Jesus your Lord and Savior, he lives on the inside of you and dwells on the inside of you, and he bears witness with your spirit that you're a child of God. But just because he's bearing witness doesn't mean you're testifying of him. This is where being filled with the Spirit, be being filled to overflowing and speaking and praying out, praying in tongues and speaking forth mysteries. Because you don't know how to pray as you ought. The Bible tells us this in Romans. When we don't know how to pray as we ought, what do we do? He comes to our aid with groanings that are too deep for utterance. Man, there's some, there's some praying in the Holy Ghost that, that there's been mysteries going on. Mysteries in your life, mysteries in my life. We're, we're stumped about some things. And so we, we, we get, we, because we're stumped, so many times where things are difficult, you know what we do? We don't address them. It's like how we work. The hardest thing that there is to do is that usually the last thing that we touch. Because we got to do this, this, this. All these other things pop up. But that's a main thing that needs to be addressed. And if you'd get that one done, how many of you know you'd actually make some progress instead of just be busy? So again, don't be anxious. Don't be anxious about anything or don't be anxious about that thing. Name it. But, but in every situation, so that situation that you're talking about by prayer and petition, a definite, that petition is a definite request. That's what that word means. Definite request. How do I know? Because I've been spending some time even just looking up these words. A definite request. Describe it in detail. With thanksgiving, present your request to God. Here's what happens. Calm. And the peace of God. Isn't that what it says? Next verse. And the peace of God. Whole. Not torn apart. Whole. Anybody want a whole family? Anybody want a whole marriage? There's some prayer that needs of care. Well, I'm, I have this care. Like... I, I, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will set a guard over your heart and your mind. That is powerful. To where we were talking about this even in our giving. There's a conversation here and there's a conversation here. How many of you know we want this to agree with this? Man, when you're at peace, when you are whole, when you're not worried about not having enough, when you, if, if, if somebody just gave you a million dollars today... How many of you would have had no problem giving $10,000? Every person in here. And that, that's 1%. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 1%. You would have had no problem giving 1% of 10 thousand It's big money, big number, but you would have had no problem giving 1%. Why? Because you, were, you knew that there was enough. Uh -huh. you, you felt whole. And so it was easy for you to go, $10,000? Yeah, yeah, let's give that. When, there's, when you're at peace, you can hear the word of God. And then you can walk in faith. So many times, what, what we're calling faith, we haven't addressed the anxiety. How can you walk in faith and have doubt at the same time? It sounds like James. Like double-minded, unstable in all your ways. This is James chapter 1, I believe. He said, uh, how, don't, 1 6, I believe. He said, you can't, you don't, don't expect to receive anything from the Lord because you're like a wave. So you can't ever walk in faith if you first don't address the doubt. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This is addressing the doubt. When you have worries, name the thing, get God's word on the matter. Now you got some substance. And now you, you, as you write that down, get, bring it to the Lord with thanksgiving. And he says, and now wholeness will be a part of your life. Peace that passes understanding. It guards your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. And then it goes on to say, and so now what you're going to do, uh, I, I don't, didn't give you the next verses, but maybe they're easy to grab. It says, but where are you going to put your mind on? Whatever's pure. Whatever's lovely. So you can go, you can instantly move from worry to faith, but by putting it back on something that another bad, you can go back to worry, or you can stay. You could stay on faith if you want. You can stay in peace if you want. You can stay in wholeness if you want, and not be torn apart. And choose what you want for tomorrow, and choose what you want for your kids. Well, what if they don't like me if I tell them this? Okay. 
That sounds like worry. Sounds like you need to get a word from the Lord. Well, uh, the word, uh, I'm just going to do it this way. I believe what the Lord wants to implement, he also preserves. He doesn't just, you know? Well, we're just going to follow God, and we're going to do this. We're taking away everything, and we're going to go. No. Ask the Lord how. Sometimes it's not just what. It's show me how. What's my next step? What have I? All right. So, and finally, brothers, whatever is pure, true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on such things. Wow. What am I thinking on? What are you thinking on? Anxiety. If I'm thinking on something that's not pure, it's called anxiety. If I'm thinking on something that's not true, it's called anxiety. Name that thing. Now, bring, bring it to the Lord and get his word on the subject matter, whatever, whatever it might be. And let God go to work. Let God go to work. Stop, we need to stop worrying. It's like, oh, that's easy to say. No, it's a choice. It is easy to say. But it is a choice. It's, it's, it's a whole lot easier to stop worrying than we've been made to believe. The Lord said, he said this, he said, put a guard in, in, uh, in Psalms, he put a guard over my mouth, right? Or maybe this is in Proverbs, put a guard. You know, he can put over your mind, Lord, remind, like show me when I my, my start getting off here. That could be a prayer. Have you been worrying a lot? Lord, keep my mind. You said that you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, right? All right, let's, let's stand. Uh, we'll, we're going to bring communion and the worship team up here. And um, I want to do. Uh, I want to go back to the the storm, and I, I'm going to read that passage in tw- uh, Acts 27. Just how on the day, the 14th day, he told them to eat, because what you're going to need uh, for for what's ahead is you're going to need to eat. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we're going to bring the uh, communion forward. We're going to pass it out. And uh, we don't, I, I, this is not all perfect polish, and, but we're going to address some storm is what we're doing. We're naming, uh, how many of you here uh, this morning, when, as we were talking about naming your anxiety, you knew by the Holy Spirit in your heart, you knew exactly what you've been worrying about. He named it. Yeah. He named it. And there's a word for you concerning that. There's a promise. All of his promises are yes and amen. They said they're yes in him, but the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. So this is important. This is what we, we're doing this morning as we are passing out these, uh, these buckets they are passing through and those little communion cups are coming. What we're doing is we're saying amen. We're saying a covenant. This is, this is what's spoken by Christ. His promises were spoken. I'll read this scripture to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Second Corinthians one twenty. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Thank you. No matter how many promises, no matter what you're dealing with, no matter the anxiety, no matter the thing, there's a word. You know, I find, I find that, that you can go ahead and open up your cups. And the, I find that even the names of God in the Old Testament, Jehovah, Jireh, the Lord, who provides for me. The names of God in the Old Testament. Jehovah Nisi, the one who's my victory. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who's my healer. Jehovah Sitkanu, the one who is my right. You begin to look at, at the names, how he introduced himself to the people. These are his names. He said, this is who I am. And there's so many promises that are just in his name. Just in his name. So no matter how many promises God has made, 2 Corinthians 1.20, 
No matter how many promises God has made, they're all yes in Christ. This is when he got the word, when he was on the boat, he said, I serve, the, 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 a messenger came to me, the, the, God, of, the God whom I serve. And he said, you're going to be spared. And all of your people, all of the people on this boat, he had to put himself in remembrance. He said, amen, amen. This is amen to the glory of God. Amen. Uh, you said, you, you keep your word. This is what we do when we receive covenant. This is a covenant talk. He's keeping his word. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to keep his word. I spilled some juice on me. Look at that. Thank you, Lord. So uh, I just want to uh, just recount that same passage in, in Acts. It says, so keep up your courage and have faith in God as I do, for I believe it will happen just as it was told to me. Now I urge you, take some food. You need this to survive. Not one of you will lose a single hair from your head. Wow. After he said this, he took some bread and he gave thanks to God in front of them all. And then he broke it and he began to eat. Father, today we, where there's been worry, just let's close our eyes. Father, today where there's been worry and anxiety and just aimlessness like this ship that was tossed in the sea the storms I don't understand it Lord how you take a passage of scripture and it's just like our lives so many lives stormy wandering wandering places and you bring your word you bring your word through a messenger to your people and you say it can be just just as I've spoken so just today we say I believe you Lord that it can be in my life it can be in my body it can be you, you, you name that anxiety it can be concerning this just as you've said. It can be concerning my finances. It can be just as you said. And, and why can it be just as you said? Because you gave us your son, Jesus. You didn't spare your son. Well, how much more will you not freely also give us all things? So we're reminded today uh, in the storm while the sea is raging, we, we are reminded today uh, of your faithfulness to find us, to send your son Jesus. And so we take this bread and we break it right now as representing your body that was for us. In place of us, your body was beaten in place of us. And that by your stripes, that punishment for sin was upon you. And so, Father, we thank you. All the effects of death were put on the body of Jesus. And so we receive the, the bread this morning as Jesus taking the payment on our behalf. Father, we thank you for intervention. That's it. I thank you for intervention right now in the name of Jesus. Intervention intervention in the name of Jesus intervention in that body intervention right now just just st stand in place standing in place intervention in the name of Jesus and we thank you that you took a cup and you said this is a new agreement a covenant in my blood he said Re remember father we thank you this blood how precious it is It's an agreement. It washed us and cleansed us from all unrighteousness. And we just say thank you for Jesus and the blood. We receive it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, we love you. We thank you 
for being our help in time of need. You're such a good father. You're such a good father. We thank you that even right now, our, our hearts and our minds are being uh, just calmed. And there's clarity coming where there's been confusion. There's joy coming where there's been despair, if you're in agreement. There's joy coming where there's been despair. There's peace coming where there's been torment. Father, we thank you. Uh, hallelujah. We thank you for, for just you and the finished work of Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Man, uh, I just believe, the, thank the Lord for the Holy Ghost, speaking and talking to each individual, the answers. Sometimes it's not what's taught, it's, it is truly the conversation that you get to have with the Lord that is the most important thing of the day. Sometimes the most important thing is a pastor to keep you captive a little bit longer, to keep you in a conversation a little bit longer, so you can't just get out of here, get just leave without finishing a work or letting him talk a little bit longer so that you can be accountable for something and actually put to practice that word. Amen. Amen. God bless you today. As you go, we'll see you Wednesday night. Thank you for joining us. We hope you were strengthened and encouraged by the word of God. 